Hey TVs, it's Lord Iceon. Welcome to Win Wiccan Wednesday. You know, I'm sitting here today looking at my jewelry that I'm wearing, and uh, you guys have, may have seen me wear this. This is my Wiccan pentacle. It's done in sterling silver. Isn't that beautiful? But you know, I was thinking, you know, it's pretty cool to wear the pentacle, but really we have to ask, how did Wiccan start wearing the pentacle? You know, I'm looking at my ring here today, and I have a Wiccan ring that has also a pentacle engraved upon it. And it's got Theban script as well. And I say, wow, that's really cool. And I think, you know, how fortunate I am to have and be able to wear sacred symbols of my faith. But you know, so many of us go around wearing these sacred symbols, but we don't really realize where it came from. And where it came from was from a man named Gerald Gardner. There's a picture of him. Gerald Gardner is the modern day founder of Wicca. Now, I, for a long time, people said, oh, Wicca is an ancient religion. The practice of witchcraft is ancient, but the modern day structure, which we call Wicca, is actually dates from around the 1930s. And um, the person we have to thank for that is Gerald Gardner. Joe Gardner is a fascinating person, and unfortunately, I think today not many, not many Wiccans really spend the time to get to know him or learn about him. You know, nowadays it's really popular to claim eclectic Wicca or eclectic witchcraft, and um, I'm all for it. I'm an eclectic myself, but all of us, no matter what branch of the craft we fall under, we owe an immense debt of gratitude to this man, Gerald Gardner. I'm reading this book I just got and just started it yesterday, but this is a book that's out about him called Witch Father. And I love this title because this really is who he is. He is the Witch Father, you know. Many years ago, there was another Wiccan named um, Alex, um, Alex Sanders, Alex Sanders. And he was called the King of the Witches. And he started a branch called Alexandrian Wicca. But truthfully, Alexandrian Wicca was a takeoff of Gardnerian Wicca. Gerald Gardner really was the first formal Wiccan um, in the way that we think of Wicca today. And so really he is the Witch King, if there is such a thing, which there isn't. But I think that the title of Witch Father is absolutely amazing. Now, as I said, we can thank Gerald Gardner for bringing modern day Wicca to us. And um, Gerald Gardner has a very fascinating life and, and it'd probably take me six hours to go through his whole life. So I'm gonna keep it really kind of simple today. We'll do more in-depth discussion on him in future videos. But basically Gerald Gardner was born in the year 1884 in England. Um, and he was born near Liverpool, England in the northwest of England. And um, he grew up in a rather actually wealthy family. His family owned tea and rubber plantations. You know, rubber in the old days came from rubber trees. I think today rubber is synthetically made, but in the old days, they found a tree that the sap made rubber. And so that's where rubber came from. And they would actually have plantations. And his family owned plantations in what we call modern day Sri Lanka, which back then was called Ceylon, uh, as a British colony. And uh, Gerald grew up, um, mostly a large part of his life was in Sri Lanka at the family plantations. Uh, he had a nanny that he traveled the world with and he went all over the world and all of his life, Gerald was fascinated by ancient cultures and their spiritual traditions. And it's believed that his influence of studying spiritual traditions around the world really helped him to then question his own spiritual tradition. You know, in Britain, when you go back to ancient history, the British connect back to the ancient pagan practices of the Druids and the cunning people, the wise people, the faith of the Fae. All of that was part of Gerald's, you know, historical background of his own culture and life. And after traveling the world and seeing all of this, it got him really questing 
to find a true spirituality that really spoke to him. And uh, Gerald, um, now this is cutting out a lot of stuff, but the, law, the short version of it was in around 1938, 39, Gerald was initiated into a group of witches. There actually was a coven of witches practicing in the New Forest area of England. And um, there was a lady named Dorothy, Dorothy Clutterbuck, who was an actual witch. And she told Gerald that she belonged to an ancient coven that went back, uh, she belonged to a coven that went back to ancient times. And they were one of the last remnants of witchcraft in Britain. And Gerald was initiated into their circle in, I think it was 38 or 39, around those dates. And um, what's interesting about it is, is that Gerald said to the people of the coven, basically, you know, this has to continue on. Why don't you bring in more and more and more? And they said, nah, this is kind of a secret religion. This is not something that the general public will accept. And uh, little did Gerald quite understand, I think at the time, how much persecution would have come upon that group had he you know, made it public at the time. So Gerald basically kept mum. And as the years went on, a lot of the coven members died off and he was kind of on his own. And uh, in 1951, uh, by well, let me just put it this way, up until 1951, it was actually illegal to practice witchcraft in England. If you were caught doing witchcraft rituals or spells, you could actually still be arrested in Britain up till 1951. So it made sense that the witches that remained in Britain kept it really on the down low. Well, in 1951, Britain outlawed the Witchcraft Act. They thought this has got to be cleared off the books. And what a wonderful thing it was because when they overturned the laws and the, um, you know, off the books, basically erased the laws about witchcraft, it allowed a lot of people who followed that belief structure to start to come out of the woodwork. Gerald Gardner was one of the first who decided to just publicly out himself as a witch because he knew that he could no longer be arrested. And because he was from a wealthy background, he basically had money and inheritances. He didn't have to worry about a nine to five job. And at this point he was pretty close, uh, I think he was actually retired at that point. And so he could out himself as a witch without any real repercussions. And thank God he did because it opened up a whole stream of consciousness for people to come and absorb the craft. Um, one of the things that he did, the first things he did is he wrote books about witchcraft in the 1950s. And this was one of his early witchcraft books. And this is a classic, which I recommend for anybody wanting to learn more about Gardner's thought is, um, this one is the meaning of, excuse me, hold on, that's the second one. The first one was Witchcraft Today, okay? Um, and this is a good book. Now, this is not a how to be a witch book. A lot of people think, oh, it's how to be a witch. I bought it when I first bought it, I thought of the same thing. It's really kind of his synopsis of the craft across time, across Britain, how it originated with the ancient peoples and the strings of magic. So it's it's not really an exciting read, to be honest with you, but a lot of people claim it's their favorite book. I have books I like better, but I think for historic purposes, it's worth the read. So he came out with this book, which would have been illegal just a few years prior. This book actually, I think, came right, at, right out right after the act was repealed in 51. By the way, here's a picture of Gerald Gardner. And um, so this got a lot of people discussing witchcraft and he started to form a coven. And Gerald used to have at his house in the backyard, he had kind of a, he had a large estate and in the back he had a small little cabin. And he turned that into the witch house where they would gather and do rituals and things like that. And so this is the book that started people questioning and exploring Wicca. And he followed that on with another book, which is kind of like a continuation, I think. Um, called The Meaning of Witchcraft. I really recommend both of these. And to be honest, they're not the most thrilling of reads, but they will give you a great appreciation for the history of the craft. And so this started the practice of Wicca. 
And it was within the Wiccan tradition that Gerald started the traditions of actually, you know, bringing out the pentacle. Now, the pentacle had existed before Gerald Gardner, but Gerald Gardner said, you know, as a witch, he claimed it as one of the symbols of the craft and started wearing them and putting them up. And so the, all of us today who wear pentacles, who have jewelry inscribed with it, we, we need to thank Gerald Gardner for that because he made the awareness of the sacred symbols. He brought forth the knowledge of them. And all of us who are blessed and protected by these sacred signs and symbols, we can thank Gerald. Uh, he's the one who also encouraged people to start wearing silver because he said it's the metal of the moon goddess. And in Gardnerian Wicca, that was the first branch of Wicca, it was called Gardnerian Wicca, they taught about the Lord and the Lady, the God and the Goddess. And in the Gardnerian tradition, uh, the names of the gods were kept secret. Now, today it's public knowledge what gods they worship. But back in the day, unless you were an initiated member of the coven, you didn't know who they were invoking on their ritual nights. We've come to find out since then, through studying Gerald Gardner's original Book of Shadows, that the god was known as Kernunos, who was the Celtic Horn Lord, and the goddess was Aradia. Now, Aradia, in some cases, was called the moon goddess. She was also called the daughter of Diana, and Diana was the moon goddess. So it's believed that Aradia was the, the daughter of the goddess, but it's kind of like in Christianity, where the son of God, Jesus, is really a representation of the father as well. So he's God, and like God is God, and the son is God. So the daughter is goddess, as is the mother goddess. And so Aradia was believed to be sent from the moon goddess, was the first, you know, high priestess, the first witch woman who helped witches. And it was believed in their day that the, the Aradia could be called upon in time of need. And so the ancient ones they honored were the moon goddess Diana, her daughter Aradia, and then uh, Kernunos. And so those were the first set of Wiccan, official Wiccan by a formal structured way, Wiccan deities. And so now we want, I want to differentiate here because people are going to say, well, wait a second, my witchcraft is older than that. Yes, again, let me reiterate, there has been witchcraft for thousands of years, but the tradition that I practice, which when I identify as Wiccan, started with Gerald Gardner really in the 1950s when he formally structured it. It was at that time he started the, you know, releasing the formal tradition of calling the quarters, casting the circle. Now, which is called quarters and cast circles before Gerald Gardner, but Gerald codified it in his Book of Shadows in a way that made a flowing structure that people could follow and actually do regular rituals from. So we all owe an immense debt of gratitude to Gerald Gardner. I was looking at my Book of Shadows and I pulled a page out. By the way, if you want to get a Book of Shadows, you should definitely check out Lady Angela's site, rarewickaspells.com. This is where this is from. But um, one of the um, pages in my Book of Shadows is called The Four Powers of the Magus, or the Magus, however you pronounce it, Magi, Magus. Um, and Magus was a term that Gerald Gardner used, and this was actually something from the original Gardnerian Book of Shadows. And this is where we get the four powers, to know, to dare, to know, to dare, to will, and to be silent. That's in my book, Shadows, but where did that come from? That came from Gerald Gardner. Gerald Gardner studied a lot of the ancient magical texts and he formulated his original book of Shadows, which really almost every book of Shadows, no matter what branch you, you follow nowadays, has an influence that comes from Gerald Gardner. Now it wasn't just Gerald Gardner because there was also Doreen Valiente, not to be confused with Doreen Virtue, who's somebody else, Doreen Valiente. I did a video one time on Doreen Valiente and somebody wrote me a big letter like, how dare you say that about Doreen Virtue calling her a witch? I said, no, you've got to confuse Doreen Valiente. Doreen Valiente was also a uh, uh, witch. Now in the 1950s, when Gardner was starting his coven, he made Doreen Valiente his high priestess. And she wrote the charge of the goddess and many of the beautiful poetic parts of Gardner's Book of Shadows. Uh, she wrote it and was incorporated. And so really, she and Gerald crafted the first formal uh, Wiccan Book of Shadows. And so we owe both of them a whole immense debt of gratitude. We'll have to do a whole separate video on Doreen Valiente. But today I just wanted to come and touch in on Gerald Gardner 
because I think that any of us, like I said, the Theban script that I'm wearing on my ring, Gerald Gardner was the one who brought that forward. Now that was it more ancient than him, but he got it in an organized form and started teaching it and used it. So Theban script, we think, can thank Gerald Gardner. The pentacles we wear, we can thank Gerald Gardner. The books on witchcraft, now there are millions of books on witchcraft. He wrote one of the first. And so Gerald Gardner has been a guide to the Wiccan movement. Um, his form of witchcraft, as I mentioned, was called Gardnerian. Now the Gardnerian witchcraft in the early days was the only form. If you wanted to be a witch, at least a Wiccan witch, you had to join the Gardnerian coven. Since then, since I'd say the late 70s, early 80s, a lot of people changed and split off from that and started eclectic Wicca. Now, Gardnerian Wicca is very structured. I actually was trained many years ago in a coven that was Gardnerian. It wasn't actually formally in the lineage, but it practiced a general Gardnerian style. Um, and we had three degrees. In Gardnerian Wicca, uh, you go in, you are trained, and then you are initiated into the first degree. So the first year your practice, you're what's called a neophyte. And then later on, you become initiate, an initiate. At the first degree in Gardnerian Wicca, you become a priest of Wicca, okay? In the, then there's a second degree. You study for a year and a day, a year and one day for each degree in Gardnerian Wicca. That's how I was trained. So I did three years with a coven. So my first year I studied, and then I was initiated, and then I was a first degree Wiccan. And then you start your second year studies. And at the second degree, you're elevated to a high priest, uh, which means you have a lot more authority. You can conduct the whole ritual. You know, In the early days, you get to do some of the ritual, but it's limited to how much you do. And then when you're a high priest, you could be, you know, basically stand in for the regular high priest or lead the ritual. Then the third degree is the elevation third degree, which is, um, you know, like that's when you're ready to kind of uh, more fully step in. It means by the time you're at the third degree, the wick is your basically your whole life. It's your lifestyle, it's your calling. And you continue on always learning. You don't really stop learning a third degree. That's a mistake. Some people think, oh, I got third degree, I'm done. No, you're not. Third degree, really? And this is the way my teacher taught me. Third degree really is just the beginning. <laughs> you got to get through those three years of study and practice before you can even really I mean, truly, you're a witch at the first degree. But if you ask me, I don't really think I was a witch until third degree. So those three years, I put a lot of study in the craft. I did a lot of reading, did a lot of spell work, did a lot of rituals, and I really learned it. And it was a, it was a real great blessing. And so I'm thankful for my, my years of study. And But you know, that whole structure that I came up under, we have to thank Gerald Gardner for that. Now, I know today it's very unpopular. A lot of people say, it's like about, I don't want to do that. I'm just a free spirit. And, and, you know, that's okay because I think that with Scott Cunningham, who I absolutely adore, um, Scott Cunningham's books gave us a whole new perspective. Now, that's going to be a whole nother video. But it was in the late 70s, early 80s that a new concept emerged, which was self-initiation and learning on your own without such a form and rigid structure. Today, there still do exist Gardnerian covens and they are still as strict and structured. For example, in a Gardnerian coven, just to give you an idea of how things have changed, in the old days, if you were not initiated in a coven by Gerald Gardner, the Wiccans would not receive you into ritual or even accept you. So if you even knew where a coven was and somehow you managed to get a hold of them and show up at a ritual, you would not be allowed in because you were not initiated as a Gardnerian. Um, and so it was very strict. And if you went around claiming you were a witch back in like the 1950s through the late 1970s, um, people would laugh and say, you're not a witch, you're not initiated. Because they believed the only way to become a witch was to be initiated by a witch. There used to be an old saying, which I don't personally agree with, but they used to say, it takes a witch to make a witch, you know? And, um, you know, I think with Scott Cunningham and some of the other authors of the early 80s, they said, well, who made the first witch? And they shifted the conversation to be more like, 
Being a Wiccan is about a relationship with a god and a goddess. It doesn't require an intermediary. And so Gardnerian Wicca these days is not as, um, how do I say, not as maybe as large as it used to be. There's still a lot of Gardnerians. Their path is valid. Uh, some Gardnerians today, I'm not saying all, some will still tell you that if unless you're a Gardnerian, initiated through a lineage to Gardner, you are not a witch. I don't believe that personally. I disagree with that, but there are people who believe that. But we do, all of us, no matter what path we owe, you know, follow, we owe a great debt of gratitude to the witch father, Gerald Gardner. Now, Gerald Gardner, again, we're going to have to do a lot more on him. But as I said, um, you know, he lived up until 1964. So uh, he lived from 1884 to 1964. So he was 80 when he crossed over to spirit. And um, after he died, a lot of his protégés then traveled throughout the world. Um, um, what's his name? Uh, Buckland, Raymond Buckland was one of his students. Uh, Doreen Valiente was one of his students. Raymond Buckland came to the United States and brought Wicca here, basically. And so the craft took off from various disciples of Gerald Gardner. Um, there was also Alex Sanders, which followed. He came around in the 60s. But honestly, Alex Sanders, I believe, stole a lot of material from Gerald Gardner. Both of them are dead. God rest their souls. But, you know, a lot of people today still claim Alexandrian lineage. But honestly, they're very similar. And I do believe Alex Sanders, looking at his own Book of Shadows, very much copied off of Gardner's Book of Shadows. Interestingly, this is a wonderful documentary. I'll put a link below I want you to watch called, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Wh uh, the Wicca Man, Wiccan Man. I can't remember the name. Anyways, I'm gonna put a link below. Uh, because there was a British professor from Oxford, Ronald Hutton is his name. And Ronald Hutton did a whole documentary about Gerald Gardner here on YouTube, which you gotta watch. So I want you to see the link below to watch that video. Um, one of the things that Ronald Hutton says, he said, you know, Britain, um, Wicca is the only real true new religion that Britain ever gave to the world. And it's true because witchcraft used to be called British traditional witchcraft, originated in Britain. And Gerald Gardner carried on the ancient British witch tradition, kind of codified and formulated it and named it Wicca. But it really, the religion is original to the British Isles. So anyways, whether you're eclectic, whether you're Gardnerian, Alexandrian, Dianic, I don't care what you are, you know. I think we all have to stop and give thanks for Gerald Gardner. Anyways, we'll have more on him. I just wanted to touch in on that today. I'm just starting this book, so I haven't gotten into it much, but I'm going to let you know. We'll read some more of that as we go along. But I hope this is giving you something to think about today and do, do a little research on. So I'll put the link below. You can learn more about Gardner. But today I'm giving thanks for Gerald Gardner as I wear my Wiccan jewelry. And I realize I have him to thank for all that. And I thank him for all of you for being here. Anyways, I hope that gives you some insight today. May all of you be blessed. Oh, also meant to say that Keep watching because I'm going to put some pictures here at the end of Gerald Gardner so you can see him. Now, he's certainly an eccentric looking character, but he's a fascinating man. And in fact, there are some interviews. If you look up, you'll find interviews of him so you can hear him speak. He's very intelligent, very brilliant, and I really like him a lot. So um, I would encourage you to check him out. Try to see if you can find the book Witch Father. It's by Philip Heselton. Uh, try to find his book, Witchcraft Today, or The Meaning of Witchcraft. All of these are still in print, and I think they'll help you learn an awful lot. And it'll give you a true appreciation for our faith. You know, so many of us just take the craft for granted, but there was a time where it wasn't so easy to be a wicked. And now we have a lot to be thankful for, that we're able to live this faith. And I don't think even in Gerald's day, he could have foreseen that it would go as far and spread as wide and last as long as it had. I think in his heart and mind, he hoped it. But if he had seen, in which way he's seeing from spirit, but if you were on earth, he would just be blown away. Anyways, thank you for being here, guys. You guys rock it. I love you. So stay tuned. We got some pictures of Gerald Gardner um, coming up afterwards. 
And make sure to also pop over to my web store and pick up some t-shirts. Got Psyche Bob t-shirts. And uh, stop by my bookstore. I have a, hold on, where'd I go? Another book for you. Hold on just a second. It's here somewhere. Um, <laughs> I'm disorganized today. Um, also get um, my Wiccan book. I've got Psyche Bob's book of Wiccan wisdom. This will give you some insights to Wicca as well. So there's a lot there for you to study. Keep it here at Spirit Show. We got more coming tomorrow is Thursday, Vlog Thursday. We'll go somewhere. Just be here. You guys rock. I love you. We'll see you then. Until then, may all of you always blessed be.